I'm Harriet Vance Ball, Associate Professor of Medicine and Cardiologist at McMaster University, and I'm delighted to have with me Dr. Stephen Lubitz from the Harvard Medical School to discuss his AHA late breaking clinical trial presentation of the Fitbit study. Welcome, Dr. Lubitz. Thank you for having me. Can you start off by telling us your study aims and methods, please? Of course. Thanks for the opportunity to talk with you today. So undiagnosed atrial fibrillation or AFib may cause morbidity, including strokes that can be prevented with early detection. Many individuals these days wear smartwatches or fitness trackers with optical photoplethysmography or PPG sensors, which can detect the heart rate. And software algorithms can be applied to the PPG data to infer the presence of AFib. We evaluated a novel Fitbit software algorithm that examines frequent and overlapping PPG signals collected by Fitbit wearable devices for detecting undiagnosed AFib. We tested the algorithm's positive predictive value for AFib in a large-scale remote clinical trial of existing wearable users in the United States. And participants who received an irregular heart rhythm notification were invited to schedule a visit with a telehealth provider and then wear a one-week ECG patch monitor, which we mailed to them and which they self-applied. So what did you find? Well, over 455,000 participants enrolled in the trial in a roughly five-month period. Thank you all for your participation. Most were women, and about 13% were age 65 or older, which is an important subgroup at elevated risk for stroke caused by AFib. Overall, 1% of participants received an irregular heart rhythm notification. And in the subgroup age 65 or older, 4% received a notification. Of those who received a notification, 32% had AFib confirmed on the subsequent one-week ECG patch monitor. The irregular heart rhythm detection PPV, or positive predictive value, our primary endpoint for concurrent AFib on the ECG patch monitor was 98% overall. In the subgroup aged 65 or older, it was 97%. We also saw that the median burden of AFib on the ECG patch monitors was 7% and the median longest AFib episode was seven hours. Most of the analyzable time and most of the initial irregular heart rhythm detections that occurred while wearing the ECG patch monitor occurred during sleep. Um, that's fascinating and certainly um, lots of um, possible applications of this uh, wearable technology beyond our tracking for personal fitness. Um, just going back to your study flow, so there were about 456,000 patients of whom around 4,700 received alerts, but only 1,700 made it to that first telehealth visit and about 1,000 received ECG monitors. Um, from your analysis, it appears that you focused on that group that received the ECG monitors but what about the 3,500 odd patients who didn't, but who had received alerts? Are you planning to analyze that data? It's a great question. And I think this speaks to challenges with remote clinical trials that may be commonplace in the future. And that is that engagement of participants is critical, but may be a challenge at a distance at times. Um, in this study, we were able to overcome that drop off between the alert that or the notification rather that participants received um, and the, uh, the, the matriculation to the next step in the study protocol because of the large sample size that we included in the study. Something similar has been seen before in prior large scale remote clinical trials as well. So this phenomenon is probably not unique to our study, but may reflect the larger uh, challenges faced by remote clinical trials. Um, I think that the, the pulse data is of interest to us in everybody who participated in the trial. We're also eager to try to find ways to engage participants in remote clinical research in the future so that we have a greater uh, adherence to the study protocol. Right. And then what about false negatives? Or is there um, is it is it practical, is it feasible to analyze the patients who did not receive alerts? Uh, sure. So part of the study protocol included an end of study survey mm -hmm. and um, about 230,000 individuals, uh, uh, slightly higher than that, participated in the end of study survey. So we collected data on self-reported atrial fibrillation, as well as contact with the healthcare system um, in those participants. And we'll be reporting on that as well. 
Wonderful. Um, do you think the results of this study, given the difficulties with remote monitoring and complete follow-up, are um, actionable. Is there a practical subset that you could potentially implement the findings of this study in? Sure, I think there are a couple takeaways that are important from this study uh, to be mindful of. And the first is that this novel software algorithm for Fitbit wearables may enable large-scale identification of undiagnosed AFib. The PPV of 98% is excellent. Uh, and the fact that it was similar among participants aged at least 65 years of age is very encouraging given the increased stroke risk among these individuals. The algorithm operates in the background during an activity, doesn't require the user to prompt initiation of the, of the software algorithm to detect uh, possible atrial fibrillation. Furthermore, one of the other interesting findings of the study is that these irregular heart rhythm detections appear to enrich for individuals with an elevated likelihood of AFib on a subsequent ECG patch and with considerable AFib burden. So in contrast to studies uh, in which patch monitors were used to screen for atrial fibrillation, we observed that about one third of individuals had AFib confirmed on the subsequent ECG patch monitor following an irregular heart rhythm detection. Uh, whereas uh, studies of uh, screening of, uh, for atrial fibrillation using patch monitors generally don't find AFib in any more than about 5% of individuals. These are studies in which pulse Irregular uh, pulse waveforms are not screened for uh, prior to the application of the patch monitor. Well, let me thank you for spending time with us and congratulate you on this fabulous study, which will undoubtedly get a lot of attention at AHA21. Thank you so much, Dr. Lubitz. Thank you very much.